Today we're going to get into some large scale painting techniques. I started this painting with spray paints actually. So now some of the spray paints I use the most personally are actually very similarly named. There are Montana Colors brand which go by MTN and they make a 94 line. Uh, the 94s are what you want to use on canvas. They're low pressure, which means that when you hit this, this the paint only comes out in small amounts at a time. It has very low pressure when it's coming out. It's not coming out super fast. So it's a really great paint. It's light and more kind of dusty. And this is the opaque line of it. The reason that I'm saying opaque, when you spray this, it's gonna cover up the surface that you're spraying it entirely and make it this pure color. Now, another type of, by the same brand, uh, MTN, that I like is the semi-transparent line. I use these a lot for big canvases and what they do is they will kind of color what's already there, but they'll do it semi-transparent so it doesn't destroy the information that is underneath it. This is really useful because you can work in black and white and then color your canvases with this afterwards. So it's kind of like glaze mixed with color already in the can, ready to go. And these actually combine well with other colors. So I can use this in combination with a semi-transparent magenta and it will come out to be a bluish purplish color. The pixels will interact with each other as opposed to it being opaque where they just cover up each other. Another brand that I use that also carries semi-transparent colors are Montana Gold. They are one of the most available spray paints that you can find in art stores, and they are pretty good. They're not bad at all. They're also a pretty low pressure spray paint, so they're good for using on canvases, and they're gonna last over time. Now, there is also, if you're doing walls, you can do a high pressure spray paint. For example, something like this, this has a, massive fan tip on it and a ton of paint comes out of it. So if I wanted to blast a giant wall, I'd be using a high pressure spray paint. Now one last thing about spray paints, on the end of the spray paint can, they all come with a tip, right? And these tips are interchangeable. So you can take this off and use another type of tip with it. There are all sorts of different tips in a similar way that there are all sorts of different brushes. Each different tip creates a different shape for the blast that you make. So I would really try using, say, fat caps, skinny caps, New York fats, Astros, uh, you know, flat caps, all kinds of different stuff. When you're buying a bunch of spray paints, get yourself a bag of assorted caps and try them all out. I start this canvas with the warms and then I transition into the cools as I get to the middle. I'm using fat caps with wide blasts that get slow as they go back and tight as they go in. And I'm also using soft caps to adjust and augment those shapes. Now I'm doing what's called the cutback with a flat wash brush. This is what takes it to a higher level of cleanliness in the shapes that I'm creating. I'm particularly good with a brush and I know that that is the fastest way that I can shape things up cleanly. Now when I first started, I was using giant spray paint blasts but now I've moved into smaller brushes and I'm only using an inch wide flat wash. That's because I'm trying to make smaller shapes on top of the larger shapes that I originally established.
I'm going to use a light yellow to cut back that bottom shape and make it look nicer. A lot of the time when I'm just jamming out with a bunch of spray paints, I'm not developing any expectations. But once I start getting on to something that I like, I find myself cleaning it up more with brushes. That's because I've been using brushes for a lot longer and I actually have better brush technique than I do spray paint can control. But when I'm using brushes, I tend to start with the biggest brushes first. So I'm starting that with an eight to four inch brush initially. And then I work my way down to a smaller flat brush or maybe even using a round bristle. These are only a few inches wide. And eventually I'm working my way down to the really small brushes when I'm working out my details. If I was to start painting a painting with one of these, it would take forever if it was huge. So you wanna start with your bigger brushes first and work your way to your smaller brushes at the end of the process.